for the actual uh, comic, I, I set it in Limehouse Basin, which was quite fun because I could just go and then actually like draw what, what the scenery around me. And it was, it was based on a true story um, because, yeah, I mean, the story in the comic is I was, I was walking there all lonely, just kind of wandering around looking at stuff. Um, and this pigeon came sort of doddering up and he was weaving like he was drunk or something. And I thought, oh, what's that? And I thought, ooh, he's probably a bit, you know, I should stay away from him, bird flu, you know, ooh. But then um, he came and he sort of looked up at me and he laid his foot down, on my, his head down on my foot. And he kept looking up at me and then he died. Like he just died on my foot. <laughs> and I went, oh, and I couldn't, I didn't want to, it felt like he'd like chosen me. Before I had a studio and I was working alone from home and I didn't really have any paid work yet and I, I was kind of a little lonely. I mean, I'd come from America to, and I'd married an Englishman and I didn't really have that many friends and I sort of was trying to, you know, get into illustration but I didn't quite know what to do and so I would wander the city a lot and the city became in a way sort of like a friend. Like for Vernon Lettuce, my comic, um, I, it, it's kind of the echoed things that happened to me, like they went to stay with a pigeon who lived in a posh flat on Piccadilly and there was an alumni from my university, Bryn Mawr, who, who also lived in that flat. So I kind of like drew them going to her flat. Afterwards they go to Primrose Hill and they're sitting out, you can see the landscape. Partly it's because I just wanted to draw the BT Tower. So yeah, that's why they're in Primrose Hill, because <laughs> you get a good view of the tower. Actually, the tower is featured in a few of my comics. It's just so weird and wonderful in space age. I went through a while of draw, uh, through a phase of drawing Shad Thames because I liked the kind of stone buildings and the, um, the sort of walkways that go over the shipping, old shipping parts. And I did one of my first books I did was a kind of mini comic, and it was the this, 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 um, Five Little Pigs, and it just had the pigs going from one place in London to the next. So I had pigs cycling in front of Tower Bridge, pigs going down Shad Thames. And it was, it was really fun. It was kind of what the first agent that was interested in my work, that was what they saw and they thought, wow, I like your pigs. <laughs> so that, that, was, that was dedicated to the people who created the Thames Path because I love the cycling on the Thames Path because you can start and go all the way like to Greenwich, under the river, up the North Bank through Wapping, which is gorgeous, across Tower Bridge and back to the South Bank. And it's a really nice cycle ride. You get so much history and architecture and stuff just on that route. If I can't find a person who's willing to pose for me, I can just go to Greenwich Park. And they have these trees with all these big lumps and bumps and curves that are actually even better than people because they, they hold still, they don't charge me, they don't complain if I draw them wrong. Comics is where I really connect with the kids because I do a lot of workshops and activities and kids will like a book, but when they read a comic, that's when they come alive and they want to start making it immediately. And they love to make comics. The good thing about comics is that Kids who can't write very well or can't draw very well, they can kind of compensate by, you know, doing the one they're stronger at, and it sort of pulls the other scale up as well. And they just don't care; they just muck straight in there. Whereas if you hand them a novel, they're, they're not necessarily going to sit down and want to write a novel straight away. Um, comics are really magic. So I tend, I, I kind of think I'm sort of, a lot of the older sort of generation don't necessarily know how to bring comics to the younger generation. It's very much for kind of like middle-aged people and. You think, no, 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 we've got to appeal to the younger generation or we're going to lose our readers. You know, we've got to bring them up. And so I think that's kind of what I'm doing is sort of trying to bring, um, connect the, the comics world with the children's world. And actually, when you connect comics and children's books, a lot of kind of really cool new things happen. There are two different groups, really. One's very, mum, you know, much more female, mumsy. One's much more male. But when you bring them together, you get more females, making, you know, women making comics, more guys thinking, oh, I'd quite like to make a picture book. And it's, you get a lot of wonderful things happening on the margins. My first big comics jam I did with Dave O'Connell um, was called Airship. And it was just like, we were just getting to be good friends. And it was just so fun. Like, you know, I'd open my inbox and he would have done the next, the next panel. And I'd think, oh, I have to go ahead and do the next one. And I'd send it back to him and I couldn't wait for him to see it. And it was just so, so much excitement working together. And I think when you get two people who are a little bit different together, you get a third kind of thing comes out of it that's not either of them and that's actually really fun to create some third thing.